wind him up and let him go! What do you say when there are no words? Feel a song that's never been heard. How do you know when you hear the call? What do you do when you've done it all? Cannonball. 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 Now what you do is how you do it. Be anything you want to be. It's not what you got, it's how you use it. You be you and I'll be me, it's just a matter of time You can't fake it, mile after mile, feeling free If you got a soul, you can make it Move them out, let them roll From sea to shine and see Ball Cannonball what do you do when the mountain is there? How do you answer the challenging dare? When your back's against the wall What do you do when you've done it all? Cannonball Cannonball Cannonball, it's not what you do, it's how you do Be anything you want to be It's not what you got, it's how you use it You be you and I'll be me, it's just a matter of style You can't fake it, mile after mile, feet and free If you got the soul, you can make it Move them out, let them roll from sea to shine and see Ball Cannonball Hey now Cannonball 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 Ooh Cannonball Yes, indeed. Good afternoon, morning, ladies and gentlemen, mothers, fathers, daughters, sons, brothers and sisters. This is the AOR iRacing Formula Renault 3.5 League round, uh, sorry, season one, round number four here at our third installation of Interlagos. My name is King Kodiak and I'll be one of your commentators throughout this evening's race. Joining me in the commentary box, keeping me on the straight and narrow, as always, is the one and only Stevie SQ. Hello, everybody. It is, yes, our final trip to the... This track, uh, we've been here for the last three broadcasts, including this one. Um, <laughs> but after this, we'll be on to somewhere else, some other corner of the globe. Um, <laughs> but yeah, brilliant track. It's very cold compared to what anybody, uh, compared to the previous two. Um, oh, it is. Compared to the previous two broadcasts we've had. Um, and these cars are definitely the quicker of that trio of, of mm. category we run. Um, so that. And the cold weather means we're going to do some very fast lap times here. The championship is tied as we've gone over the halfway stage. Three rounds done, three to go. And now Lander, after a disastrous run at Donington, last, well, last time out, which was two weeks ago in these cars, finds himself level on points with Rene Ostergam, his main championship rival. Vaikyavi in third, but quite, some, quite a few points down. Charlie Summers four, then Stefan number five, Tim Tillar six. Eklund from seven. Greg Alton 8, Loris Morris... Uh, uh, I knew I got that one wrong. <laughs> Loris Morris in 9, and Kessler in 10th joint with Phil Reed at that position. Qualifying is um, just got uh, under 6 minutes left to go. This is where we currently stand. Osterkamp at the top once again, but only 6, <coughs> six thousandths ahead of Viking Harvey. Oh, as I'm reading that... The six thousands get split by Tim Denial. Wow. Oh wow. my goodness! 
No. Yeah, he's gone within three thousandths of Rene and then for three thousandths ahead of Alcavi. Although oh. Charlie Summers has just smashed all of them. Oh my goodness, he's got a 16.929. Now only a couple of drivers managed to get a 16 on the board during the practice that preceded this run before we came on air. So that's a blinder from Charlie Summers. We've seen how quick he is. We've seen how quick all of these drivers are. Let, let's not uh, let's not beat around the bush. They're all amazing drivers. But uh, yeah, that's that, that's quite a benchmark. But he would see. Oh, Valtteri Landa. I was just about to say he was a, seemed a little bit off off the pace in practice. But practice doesn't mean anything. Now's the time to pull it out. Absolutely, and, and as just a quick recap for this format, you get three laps, um, you get a little track all to yourself, you get ten minutes to do, complete three times lap, um, so no excuses about being held up, it's just you, on your own, go and do it. Valtteri Lander messed up his first one, um, so that was the second mm. one that counted, he's on his third one now. Yeah, a few um, people have got uh, invalid laps, I can see on the board, so... Uh, Ooh, it's not going well for everybody, and uh, I think Vaikiavi has... Uh, oh no, Vaikiavi is still going, I thought he'd uh, return to the pit. We're watching Valtteri Lander as he climbs the hill, and Osterkamp jumps back up into third, but he's still 3 tenths behind Charlie Summers. Oh, that's... Uh, um, that didn't go well for, for uh, Valtteri Lander. Oh my goodness, that went horribly, horribly wrong. What on earth did he do? It's, well, we saw what he did, but it, it was, that's more a case of how as opposed to what. That was rather bizarre. I, of course, couldn't see that. That um, was very strange, but either way, he's, uh, that's, well, he will start no higher than fourth then. And uh, Osterkamp's come to a halt, so he will start no higher than third as he's doing some practice stuff. Second there. row for the championship contenders. Wow, well, well. And, and just to point out as well, we were talking before the broadcast about um, who, who's in and out of the championship. Mm. Um, so I did some research. Uh, you get 52 points for a single race win. Um, you get one point for pole position, one point for fastest lap, good bonus point for classifying in the results with zero instant point, and one bonus point for one instant point. Which technically means, not including tonight, there is after tonight there will be 112 points on offer. Which mm. means, right now, everybody except for Alexander Waldo, Darren Potter, Sam Cruz, and Nick Domino, or in with the fight of the champ. Some of those drivers wow. are going to need a lot of luck. <laughs> but, I mean, uh, look what happened to Valtteri Lander last time out. You know, absolutely. first two first two wins, and they were pretty damn solid wins as well. Suzuki uh -huh. got chased by his teammates, uh, Vaikiavi a fair bit, but it was still a really, really solid win. And then, suddenly 11th. Absolutely. But it means that people like Timo Valkyavi and Charlie Summers, who, you look at them and go, 46 points off the lead, but... That is totally achievable. Mm. Oh, yeah. Dominic Gaudemar jumps up into fifth position with a 17-2-7-2. Uh, only 8,000 off the back of this man, who is about to complete his third lap, I assume, after that rather odd, bumpy exit from the final turn last time. Let's see where Mr. Alanda now finds himself. Does he improve? No. He that does not. Lap. Well, well, that's... Uh, is he not done all his three laps? He's only, the one lap, time lap he's done is the only one that counts. Oh dear. He, so, he messed up his first one, got attacked the, the 17 2, and his third one was invalid as well. Well, that's his day done. He's just having a practice out there. Uh, he's the only oh. guy on track, so we may as well stay with him. Oh, Daniel Morris is out there, but I think he's doing some practice starts down there in 17th. Oh Unfortunately, my. Unfortunately, gone. I say, no, oh my. Very surprised to see uh, championship leaders on the second row. Yeah, um, and what's worse for uh, Alanda, and well, worse, good, good, worse, not sure on this one. Um, <laughs> Timu Valkyar, his teammate, is on the front row. Um, yeah. Timu is, is third in the championship. Um, he is not too far away. <laughs> uh, I think it's fair to say Valtteri had the edge on him. Um, but, but certainly in qualifying, it looks like Timu is the one that's able to turn it on a little bit better. Um, but it doesn't look like they're going to be able to run away from it like they did at Suzuka. Um, they have, they have uh, quite a lot of close competition. Now, I'm curious to see what lap time Valtteri Alanda does this time. And that's that's an 18.5. Oh. Mm. So, uh, he's just burning the clock down, really. <laughs> Fair enough. Yeah. Um, um, just, as, uh, just as a point as well, if you, anyone's curious on times between the three cars and three sets of cars we've run here, Paul in the GTE League 
uh, was a 128.1 with a considerably high, but that's very slow compared to the um, Rene Osterkamp in the F3 league last week got pole uh, with a 124.5. Um, so I think it's fair to say he knows his way around, and these cars, oh, we've got seven or eight seconds quick. They are storming these things. I mean, we do see a bit of a gap between them, but I, I, I haven't actually looked to see what the timing gap between. Particularly this and the, for <coughs> the Formula Renault, uh, ah, the Formula Three. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's not generally seven or eight seconds, is it? It might be. I, I have. I these, are, like... these are pretty beasty things. <laughs> they have definitely more power, and they have a lot more aerodynamic. Well, there is our grid then. Charlie Summers takes the front row with Viking RB two, Ostercamp three, Alanda four, Gaidemir five, Tim Delisle sixth, Herman seven, Greenhall a new entrant to this league. We were contemplating on how he's pronouncing his name but I'm going to go with Greenhalg unless told otherwise in 8th position not a, a fairly decent effort for the debut race Larson 9 Phil Reed 10 Morris 11 Brezina 12 Martinson Lindstrom Butelar Dove Morris Waldo and Krutz round out the field yep it's um, only a minute or so till the uh, green light um, for an hour we have a one hour race here um, they will have a limit of 17 incidents, uh, and you pick up incidents for either running wide, running off track, crashing into people, losing control of your car, just to name well, all of them, really. <laughs> um, this track is pretty easy on track limits. The only place they need to be careful of are, is turn four, really, and the final corner can be a little, little mean. Um, on exit rather than entry, they can run a little wide on entry. There's the chopper cam looking at the top four. Charlie Summers of the uh, pole spot and the two Glacier Racing cars both on the left taking the inside line then it is of course Renny Oscar as we are staring down on top of we're waiting for uh, another couple of drivers uh, Jan Brezina, Dominic Gadamer and Daniel Morris to grid up and they will like it or not they'll be forced to do so in the next few seconds oh here we go right we should be and there we go the counter is now counting down revs rising and away we... Wow, that's a long hold. And away we go then. Who's going to get the greatest start? And look at Osterkamp. Jump straight over to the middle. He wants to get a slipstream off of uh, off uh, Vike Yarby. And look at that running outside. Gaydemar on the outside of, of Orlando. He's trying to get through. Oh, no. And that's Gaydemar. He's taken way too much of that inside curve. That's gone horribly wrong for him. He's, that's put Gaydemar down too. I can't even find him. Oh no, down to the back of the field, there he is. He's completely spun out as a result of that one mistake. That's a bit of a shame. Greenhalgh now up to fifth. He's just come past Tim Delisle, and he's a damn quick driver at, at any time, let alone the best time. So a great start for uh, Andrew Greenhalgh as they come streaming up through the uh, through the lakes then for the first time. Charlie Summers is keeping hold of the lead. Bit of a lockup then coming through turn eight. Now down to Perinino. Turn nine, Valkyabi in still in two, Osterkamp three. And a land of four. And there is Green Elk with uh, Tim Deline in short order. That's right behind there was Stefan Herman, was it? Yep, yeah, that's Stefan yeah, Herman. Yeah, Brevina on the inside of the second last corner trying to get past Stefan Herman. It was an opportunistic move to turn and go on the outside there in the first <laughs> place. That was Erkin Lindstrom getting it's barreling in. It's uh, a little wide. It's going to let Stefan straight back past, but this is costing them so much time to those ahead. Here we go then, top six, seven in that battle. There is the side-by-side uh, -side we were looking at previously of uh, Brezina and Herman with uh, Erka Lindstrom getting involved in that as well, trying to get on the inside of the pair of them. That's uh, going to be very bold if he manages to pull that off, but no such luck. Everyone falling back into line. And wow, the top guys are all, all got about three tens between them. There's Greenhouse defending, as you can see, at the top of the shot. Well, everyone is... Uh, really jostling for position there you see the aerial cam Herman on the inside of Lindstrom then just behind them is uh, Lindemir Martin Sarah Dove battling for 11. Yeah this is what we love to see lots of battling going on but uh, looks like doesn't look like anyone's been through the pits yet so it's been fairly clean so far. Oh Greenhalgh oh, Greenhalgh's oh, no. round sorry. That was, oh. that was a mouthful to say there. <laughs> he, uh, yeah, that was. Um, I'm going to have a look back to see what's happened, but he was running so well up in fifth place. Oh, oh, he got a little tap. He got a little tap. Oh, that's a shame. Oh, yeah, he just tripped the Lyle. What a shame. 
And of course, you know, he's then facing the wrong way with lots of people coming at him. And uh, you know, he took the wise, wise move of get out of the way. Oh, what yeah, a shame. He, he, he recovered. He's at the back, though. He's the only one he's ahead of is Soren Cruz at the minute. But he's right behind Dominic Gaydemir. Um Gaydemir was the only victim on lap one. And that was a self-inflicted uh, spin from what we see. Phil Reed's making a move up on Tim Delisle. He's making some moves. He's already up four places. He's he looking is. strong to take another one. And he got a hell of a wobble uh, through, through turn three. Oh, wow. Look at that. I mean, the, also bear in mind, these things do have... A curse system on them. It's, it's not a curse system in a, in a normal sense. It's only uh, how many uses? Yep. Ten uses yep. in the race, yep. isn't it? It's, it's not curse. It's DRS. <laughs> Beg your pardon. Uh, it, it's DRS. Yep. Uh, I, knew, I knew I had that wrong when I said it. <laughs> <laughs> they um, they can use it eight times throughout the entire race. There's no prerequisites. You can use it to attack, to defend. Just if you're on your own and you're, you you want to go for a hot lap, uh, you can use it any point you like on the track. But you only get eight. Um, so, so you have to use them sparingly or use them wisely. I would imagine Phil Reed used that to absolutely catapult past Tim Delisle at that point. We don't know, unfortunately. Uh, oh, Daniel Morris, all the way down there towards the back. There he goes, uh, Greenhouse, trying to make up for that uh, earlier incident. Uh, Butelard already behind Daniel Morris. So, lots of uh, jostling going on. Yeah, we saw. Wow, look at the gap between Delisle and Phil Reed already. That's uh, that's a big old gap. There's about eight, eight tenths or so. Osterkamp is on the back of Vikiavi, and I'm intrigued. Alanda is really. We used to see him up the front and running off. Not yeah, he's going to have to fight for this one. He's going to really have to fight for this one today mm. if he wants it. Um, it's looking that uh, Team AOR Blue Car Charlie Summers. He put it on pole and he is maintaining that lead at the minute. Um, but we're also only five minutes in. So uh, we a lot can happen, <laughs> we have a long way to go, so let's not get carried away. Indeed. Oh, Canute's in trouble. Canute's been uh, steadily falling through the field. As that's uh, Andrew Greenhaug that uh, is side by side. With the AOR yellow car number 20. So, uh, yeah, that's, that's... Canute is uh, usually fairly known for sort of a, a solid result of nothing else, but sadly it's just, today doesn't seem to be his day. Yeah, I'm very surprised by Atlantis. Unless Atlantis is biding his time, he's a he's a wide old racer, is that one? So uh, he'll know he'll know his strategy certainly better than we do. Absolutely, and, and getting to the end is, is part of the the puzzle. Um, and he is he's very good at finishing race. Oh yes. Uh, so he's got a long way to go. And regarding Orlando, he, there's there's not a lot of point really in fighting super hard, super quickly this early in the race because you're just going to bring more people into the fight. Um, I think if he's happy that this group is pulling away, I think he'll be quite happy to let that happen. Um, they will pit at some point. Um, when will we find out? Have we lost Crooks? No, we haven't. Just uh, my uh, overlay going a little bit nuts. Rosina and Herman side by side. They have been for quite a few corners now. Oh, Stefan Herman, 179 on the outside of turn four. Can he get it? Oh, no! That was That's, a bomb. That was oh. a big old bomb. So that's lost him a few positions then. That's uh, Lubimir Morris has come through. It's lost him one position, to be fair. There's uh, Erkin Interim, Saradov. They've been battling since the start. That is now for 10th position they fight for. Uh, just behind them, there's Kimi Larson. Kimi Larson was started up ninth. He's lost three. The Super Swede is uh, not having a particularly good day today. A bit of a shame. Are we seeing a bit of a sort of shake up of the guard? Maybe. And the other thing to consider in this is something I've not really mentioned or thought about previously um, but it was something that I re realised at the end of the GT League as well um, this track is, is a real struggle when it comes to following another car um, I remember it being an issue when I raced in the GT League um, hmm. but it's definitely going to be an issue with these with the amount of damn forces generate following in that middle part of the lap with this much dirty air is going to be a real real thing to conquer um, and it's going to be so important if you're trying to sell for the move. Yeah, absolutely. The lead now 1.8 seconds for Charlie Summers over Simu Vajavi. Osterkamp has fallen a little bit back off the lead team place car into the chasing one, which isn't normally the way around of Alanda and Vajavi. Alanda's not normally the chaser. I mean, no disrespect to uh, Vajavi at all, but it is normally Alanda that is the front runner. Then it's just about two seconds between Atlanta and Phil Reed, who still has 
Tim Delisle in short order. And then it's a big gap, nearly five seconds between Tim Delisle and Jan Brzezik. Oh, bit of a moment there for Tim Delisle as we were looking at him. And there's a big gap, four and a half seconds between uh, Delisle and Jan Brzezina, who carries with him Libby Mimara, Stefan Herman, Erkin Lindstrom, Sarah Dove, and Kimi Larson. So quite a big gap there. The, the field behind have spread out a little bit. Uh, but even still, we, even though we're only a few minutes in, we, uh, a few people have got some incidents on the board. Uh, nothing that uh, anyone's going to be too worried about at this point. No, they'll be fine for a while. Um, just to a point as well on Tim Delisle, as we, you know, he's doing very well. He's running in sixth place. He remember how he last just last week he won uh, the feature race in the F3 and then threw it away <laughs> in the in the sprint race, in which he was was most annoyed about. Um, but he knows how to drive this track. He uh, he certainly got some good speed around there. Oh, so that was the interview where where Tim denied the existence of the feature race, wasn't it? Yes, he denied the existence. <laughs> he refused to acknowledge the other one happened. Mm. Oh, Greenhow, what's happened to you? Oh, he's off again. Oh no, oh, what has no. happened to you? It was a shame. He was on such a great charge. He'd gone up to about sort fifteenth, of I think. Oh, he oh. just dropped it. Oh, that was and he's hit the really. That was actually a relatively slow speed spin. Well, it was, but he, he did he clunk off the wheel. Might have damage though. I'll see if he's got damage. Ronnie Ostergaard uh, has uh, gone back on the loud pedal again. He's uh, pulled slightly further away from Vel Valtteri Landa, and is back on Vikyavi's case. That's looking back from car number seventy. It's a big old yellow, yellow car, white twenty nine, is looming large in his mirrors again. There's no one really trying to put the pressure on him. Mm -hmm. He's really now. This might be a DRS one here because he's gaining. <laughs> oh, look how early that uh, Vikiavi committed to the defensive line and uh, Rene staying very much in the slipstream of a car 70. But Alanda is 1.1 seconds behind the pair of them now. You can only just see him at the top of the shot. Well, I hope, I hope for his sake, he's playing the tactical game. His uh, lap times have been you know, decent, but not that. <laughs> Not that high in essence, so interesting. Charlie Summers, though, knows his problem for him now, leads by 2.7 seconds. Yeah, he's he's absolutely flying at the minute. Uh, he's he's on the only one consistently in the 17s. Um, the only other person I can see so far that's even done a 17 is Rene Ostercam, mm. and that was on lap three, and we're now on lap seven or eight. <laughs> um, for Ren, but but Charlie has been in. He's well, he's only done one, well. He's only done one lap that was an 18. <laughs> that was but, the first one. but even that, that was a 118.000. So as per my oh, rules, sorry enough, will... sorry Stevie, sorry oh, no. enough. Oh, been no. spinning, oh, no. spinning off into the grass. What happened here? She's chasing that. I think it's Erkin Lindstrom. So she was having a, a great old battle there. Oh, that's on the lead up to the last corner. Yeah, that's that exit of the final corner. It's a little slippy on that Astro Turfy curb. Um, and it's very easy to, to loop it around. And it's so annoying because it's such a crucial corner exit to get right. Um, because it carries you all the way up to turn one. And if you, you're a little bit slow out there, you're vulnerable. So that, that's not what she wants. She's still going. Um, plenty of time still to go to recover positions. Um, but that's that's a little little confidence knocker that is. Yeah, that won't be the last that won't be the last time we see that mistake either. Uh, I, I dare say. Yeah, Andrew How oh Andrew Greenhalg is in the pits. Oh, I wonder if he's taking this opportunity. In oh, oh, he's in danger of getting lapped. He a... may regret that. He, if he he needs to get it out and get and his quick. foot down if he doesn't come on to get lapped. Oh. He should be all right actually. We've yeah, lost he... we've lost Soren Krutz. He's gone. Yep, Simon Cruz has left the session. Well, that's a great shame. But yeah, car number three, Andrew Greenhalgh. That was a really quick stop. That was 8.6. That's me forgetting actually how quick the stops are on these cars. So even though he bounced off the wall, it would seem he didn't really have any damage to worry about, which was uh, obviously good for him. So there there he is. There's the race leader. So if we go on the nose of Charlie Summers, we might be able to spot Andrew Greenhalgh. Not quite. So there is a little bit of a gap between the two. But uh, yeah, with the pace that, uh, well, new fastest lap by half a second, 
over wow. half a second. Charlie Summers, uh, Andrew Greenhouse really going to have to really get on with it if uh, he doesn't want to be uh, a lap down already. Yeah, he's, he needs to get a bit of a wriggle on. Um, Charlie is flying at the minute. Ooh. He's his pace. Oh, oh. Kenny Martinson and Daniel Morris are having a, quite a, a battle for what is 14th position. They've swapped round a few times. And uh, there was a little, almost a, a moment of impact between them. Not quite. It's a, a little bit of locking tyres. There's Sarah Dove trying to recover from that earlier spin. But, uh, sorry, Stevie, I cut you off, cut you off unceremoniously uh, there. Uh, it's okay. Please do. <laughs> uh, as, just regarding Charlie's lap times, he's, his pace has increased. Oh, no. Guys, it's over. He's just on another 18. 18-0. That's just it. Second. 18 That's <laughs> That's his second slowest racing lap after the first lap. That's that's genuinely quite scary. Which is which is quicker than Timu's fast lap. And Just saying. Four point seven seconds his lead now. Yeah, Charlie is. This is a a masterful. But we've seen this a few times from different drivers. You know, we saw it from from Glacier at Suzuka. We saw it with Timu and uh, Valtteri. We mm. saw it in Nurburgring in the very first race of this season. See, season. Uh, with both Rene and uh, Valtteri. Um, so every now and again, someone just unlocks the performance at a circuit. Um, which means you get very, very dominant performances, but it's always impressive. Rene still nailed to the back of Vicky Arby, and, and Amanda has remained... He might have a go here. He's re uh, Valtteri and has remained around about a second behind, so he's not lost any significant time, just hasn't gained any either. Surely this is an opportunity for us to count. To yeah, get he's getting it. Definitely going for it. Oh, wow. Just as I cut to the uh, nose cam of Rene. Oh, that's Phil Reed on the back of Valtteri Alanda. Oh, my goodness. So whilst, uh, whilst I was looking away, Phil Reed has been rather minding his own business and getting on with it. Last His best lap was 17.7. Rene Ostercamp around the outside of turn three. And it's grabbed him into second. Where did Phil go? He he like oh, I wonder if he's had a spin at turn one. Yep, he lit the rears up ever so slight. Oh, that won't do it too good. He lit the rears up a little early on the exit of turn one and connected with the rear left tyre with the tyre barrier. That car might be in trouble. Oh, yeah, there he goes. Ow, ouch. Yeah, that, that tyre wall doing... Well, tyre wall being more tire, more wall than tyre. Ow. Doing this job, though. Oh, set up the car. <laughs> it, it certainly did. And, uh, yeah, Rene, so Rene Oscar did complete the move for second position. So through he goes then. Val Valik Yavi now has his uh, championship leading team staring at his gearbox. So I wouldn't be at all surprised if they swap round. But you never know. You know Valik Yavi's still in the championship hunt. Slightly longer shot than Amanda, of course. But you never know. His own team, it looks like he's going to have a go back. He's making Rene go defensive into turn one. Ah. This this is all just brings Valtteri closer. Yeah, that's exactly what I was going to say, is that helps his teammate really get back up into it. Is Phil Reed coming to the pits? Yes, he did. So that's not a surprise. But it's, at least it's happened early enough for Phil to have a chance to regain some of the lost time. But Ooh. yeah, he's going to be in there a while, I'd imagine. We've also got Daniel J. Morris in the pits, and he's been in there for a while. Oh, dear. I'm mm. going to see what happens. Oh dear. Oh, that's. That was looking at a potential side by side then for Viking Arby and Ostercamp coming through the Ferragura at uh, turns 6, 7, and now through 8. A bit of a lock up then from Ostercamp downhill. Here we go again. Perinino. Oh, and the Viking Arby getting very, very close. I'm going to jump on board actually with uh, Alander as he's got a great ringside seat for what's going on directly ahead of him. Find what I want. There we go. So now coming down through Mugello, up to Jim Schaub. And Nostcamp, of course, getting a pretty decent run through there. And Valtteri and Lander getting a bit of a twitch on as well. Seeing how that corner has already bitten a few people. Sarah does rather displaying that one rather nicely, but uh, Renny Oscamp's given himself a decent enough drive to get out of that turn without being challenged into turn one at the moment. But that's about only three tenths between Oscamp and Vaikiabi, and he's so he's keeping himself very much in that fight. Now, down oh, through. Oh, right here, right here, run, run wide through on the exit of turn two. Oh, here he goes. 
right back on him. He's not going to be, be uh, allowed to make mistakes like that. No, oh, that is job done way before they get to the breaking zone of turn four. No, Vikiavi back up into second position. But of course, that's helped Alanda gain a little bit. That's, uh, I'm sure that's not the uh, plan that uh, Rene had in mind. No, definitely not. The pl another plan that wasn't in mind was Phil Reed, who is still in the pits. I think he's oh. done. The car is off. Uh, so I assume he's out. And yeah. a quick update on Daniel Morris as well. On the exit of turn 10, the hairpin left right that everyone locks up at. Uh, he dropped on the exit of that and, and clobbered the barrier. Ouch. The other thing to consider for Rene as well, if Rene used a DRS to get past Timu, Timu probably didn't need to use one back to get back past him. Mm. Because that was a mistake from Rene rather than a run from Timu. Yeah, yeah, so that's just a, that's a wasted DRS essentially for, for Rene. Here we go again though. Uh, Viking Army still <laughs> feeling the need to go defensive. Is Rene going to dive on the inside? No, it feels. Feels better about that. That's what two tenths looks like in these cars. And then only nine tenths back to Valtteri, who's got a decent ringside seat. Here we go again. Vikiavi nailed to the inside to uh, to prevent any further slipstream. But Rene has gone through. Is he going to complete the move? That's close. He's got the outside. One's a little bit wide. Tiny bit of a wobble. And back up into second for Rene Oscar. But don't you get the feeling this might last a while? Yeah, it's, <laughs> as we've seen the past couple of weeks, it, it's difficult to break, break the slipstream here. Another fight going on, by the way, at the same time as that one was, uh, was Eccle Instrument Kimmy Larson, who were basically doing all the same things that Valkyavi and Oscamp <laughs> were doing. Um, yeah. But Eccle managed to hold that one off. Um, but yeah, this this looks battle looks like it's going to continue. I will say, though, going into turn one last lap, Valtteri Lander was not that close. To those ahead of him. He's reeled in now, but he was not looking like he was ready to capitalize if anything happened. Hmm. Interesting. Uh, again, he just could just be playing the waiting game. Absolutely. Biding oh, his Jimmy, time. Jimmy Larson has managed to pass actually from somewhere in the midfield part of it. And oh I could just tram wide. Sorry, carry on. Oh Gadimet is right with Urkel Instrum actually. Uh, Dominic Gady may bring himself in. He's had a disastrous race. Started way up in fifth place now. Finds himself down 11, chasing Gar 98 down the road. He's going to jump back out to the racing line. And no, he's going to have to remain where he is, but he's forced Erkin Instrum to take a bit of an alternate line through turns two and three. He's now jumped to the outside already for. Oh, what's happened to Tim Delisle? He's pitted. He's pitted. Uh, nothing's happened to Tim Delisle. And Erkin Instrum defending all the way down that back straight. He's trying to hang on to the inside for turn four. Forced uh, Ganymede to go the long way. Ganymede's still hanging on in there. He wants the inside line for the next two. He's still there. He's on the inside for one. But Erkin Lindstrom just manages to shut the door. Well recovered then for Erkin Lindstrom. Yeah, that was very well defended from Erkin against arguably a faster car. Um, but there was a point in practice where Erkin was, was top. Um, so, you know, he, he certainly was out there to, to race and to fight. There's no blue flags, he can fight for that position. There's no classes or tiers in this one either. This is just an all-out free-for-all. Um, oh, well, Lander's very close to Valkyavi. I wonder if this is going to be a move. Oh, no, Valtteri back out there. Oh, and Valkyavi didn't seem very interested in letting him go either. No. He gained, he gained half, a, half a second on uh, Timu, did Valtteri. Oh, Erkin uh, Lindstrom, what's happened to you? You've, well, you've been overtaken by uh, Gadamer is all that's happened to you. Oh, wow, <laughs> guys, Gadamer felt the need to close the door very conclusively on Erkin Lindstrom at the same time that Erkin was coming back to the racing line. So, uh, Alanda has now passed Valkyavi. Alanda has passed Valkyavi indeed. Was that let through or was looking away at that particular moment? It could be understood as either way. It could be, no, right. it could be, it could be Ada's. Fair enough. So Erkin Lindstrom right with uh, Gady Mayer. Sarah Dove and Tim Delisle are side by side. So uh, Tim Delisle, of course, having been through the pits, a pretty quick stop, 6.2. So a decent stop for Tim Delisle. Uh, Sarah Dove will probably just want to hang on to the back of the slipstream from Tim's car. Although she's really pushing him at the moment. And uh, Mr. Summers up front has a, a slight lead of about 11 seconds. Yeah, I, I'm really curious now if, if Rene and, well, I mean, I'm going to make a bold statement now. Mm -hmm. 
I don't think, based on what we've seen so far in the previous 23 minutes of this race, <laughs> I don't think Alanda has the pace today. I'd agree, based on what we've seen. I, so I will be curious if Rene can can make any impression on Charlie Summers. Uh, looking, uh, at, looking at lap times, Charlie Summers was nearly a full second quicker than Rene Oscar, and Rene wasn't defending against anybody. Yeah, so what Charlie, Charlie's done. He's done it brilliantly well. Yeah, I I will be and oh, uh, knowingly for Andrew, he's been lapped now as well. <laughs> Oh, no. Although I don't think there was any way to, to not get laps when Charlie Summers is pumping in these little lap times. Indeed. And uh, Butelat has brought his car in. A uh, bit of a longer sub, 8.2, but nothing too drastic. Uh, away he goes. That's Phil Reed's stranded car. But I'm looking at Orlando. He may not have the pace for the top spot. Let's see if he's got the uh, pace to take on his, champ his main championship rival. Oh. New fastest lap from Charlie Summers, a 17.3. <laughs> well, Mr. Summers. That is that is less than half a second off pole position, with a lot more fuel on board. The words defy me. <laughs> I really do. <laughs> 18 that, zero that, zero. that was a second quicker than Rene last lap. It was. Uh, Valtteri Alanda gained three tenths on Ostkan last time, so... Uh, that's getting a little close, or closer at the very least. So those two are not looking to separate each from each other for a while. Timu is now one and a half seconds behind this particular battle. So if uh, it probably has been agreed between the pair of them, you have a go, and if I don't get anywhere, you then have a go. Kind of arrangement. Absolutely fine. Nothing wrong with that. Nope, something to you know? of. Oh, nothing's happening. Do you know what? Do you know what might be a nice idea? Go on. And this might be the ultimate curse. <laughs> Can we? Should we do an onboard lap with Charlie Summers? Why not? Given the pace he's running at, just to, just to see how committed he is through some of these corners. Let's go. On. Oh, no, this this could be this could be very boring. This could be really <laughs> smooth and not interesting. Well, here we go on board in the cockpit of Charlie Summers coming into turn one. Nice and smooth, and again, as, as I've mentioned before, the how when they sort of go to the 90 degree lock, their hands are in front of their eyes. And Charlie Summers takes that fairly nicely. Has uh, lost three tenths on that last lap, still quicker than anybody else by another three tenths bare minimum. <laughs> so, just a league of one for Charlie Summers at the moment. So he's uh, come through turn four and turn five, up the hill once again through six or seven. Wow, those things are loud. Speed. Look at the speed he carried, it was amazing. There's a lot of sliding going on in the car, but then that's nothing really unusual for single seaters. It's nice and steady through turn nine, barely now. Back up the hill now for the slow right hander of turn ten. Now back downhill again through Michello, turn eleven. Drives the apex quite nicely over to the right hand side, onto the AstroTurf for turn twelve, Jun Shao. Then Nails the ball. Oh, someone's had a smoky moment already ahead of him. That was David Butelart. Oh dear, that's, that's not going to help him. There is Butelart. He's not going to be in the pit of the machine. He's not in that area. And that, he was straight lining the laps. That was like a quality lap. 17 2! That was the new fastest lap. <laughs> oh, what a time to ride on board with Charlie Summers. He even straight lined it like it was a quality lap. So even though he's got 13 seconds now to the good. Charlie Summers is taking nothing for granted. He is out there. He wants every yeah. You know, he wants that fastest lap point. And at the moment, the commentator cursing coming, but he's got <laughs> no incident points. He wants every point there is to gain. Yeah, he could be going on for a for a full on grand slam at the minute. Um, because if he carries this up, like we're about halfway through the race, depending on when people play, he's going to come out pretty far up the grid anyway. Yeah, he could potentially not lose the lead at any stage. That would be an incredible feat. I'm looking for other people that are involved in battles as well. Just to remind us, we do have other people involved in the race. So Valtteri Lander is uh, hovering around seven or eight tenths behind Ostergamp. So uh, Rene, they're, they're very nip and tuck at the moment. Valtteri Lander finally getting into the seven teams. That sounds really disingenuous, but you've got to think what we've just witnessed from Charlie Summers was a 17-2, and it's taken halfway through the race for our championship leader to get it under 
118. So that that's really again highlights how you know one man army that Charlie Simmons has been so far. Like, yeah, and it, <laughs> go on. <laughs> and 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 you know we we we're giving the plot to Charlie. He's fourth in the standings. It's not out of this world that he could become a championship contender. Mm. Rene and, and Valtteri, and he's shown great pace. He could have potentially won at Donington, but he had that instant with a lapped car. Um, Charlie is coming on great oh, form. Oh, oh, no. no. Oh, no. That's a lot What's of smoke and Valtteri Lander in the middle of it. What's going on here? I guess he's just looked at the exit. Oh. Turn two. Yeah. Too much inside curb. Round he goes. And there goes uh, Viking Arby through. Well, that put an end to that one. <laughs> yeah, and we were talking about cursing other drivers. <laughs> yeah, commentator curse, but not quite as I expected. But yeah, just just finish that point. They, Rene and Orlando, who are currently tied at the top, um, they they have to be aware of a driver like Summit. Mm. And and Valkyavi as well. He's also picking up good points at the minute. Oh yeah, absolutely. Consistency counts. Anything can happen to any of one of them. Consistency is a very undervalued, uh, you know, un often underrated particular value of, of any kind of racing driver. So, uh, you know, bear that one in mind when thinking about sort of predictions and what have you. Erkin Lindstrom on the back of Dominic Gaydemir. Well, I'm surprised three. hasn't pulled away, by the way. Who, Gaydemir? Yeah. He was so aggressive getting past uh, Erkin Lindstrom, you know. You, when you consider as well, Gaydemir qualified fit. We did. And uh, Erica Lindstrom has just sat with him after getting past. And there's Kimi Larson just coming through the shot. There's only two and a half seconds between Larson and Gaydemir at the moment. So uh, Kimi's still a bit of a target potentially for Gaydemir. And so Erica Lindstrom about half a second behind. Canute now on his own, very much so. And oh, is it Waldo in the pits? Yes, he is. So Alexander Waldo choosing now to get his mandatory pit stop underway. Let's see how long he's stationary for. It is... A decent time is around about the six second mark. Seven and a half, slightly longer, but you know, he may have had a little tap with something or someone. So, decent, st <coughs> decent stop nonetheless. And he rejoins. Where is Green Howard? He's behind. He will not challenge for... Is that Osterkamp coming up behind? Yeah. It is. <laughs> It, uh, it, it green holds there. He gets a little bit worse every time a car laps him because he has to lose is the lift off, mm. lose time letting them through, and he he could be up in the top ten given the pace he showed in uh, in practice and qualifying. Yeah, real absolutely. shame, real shame. The Waldo comes out. He's the last man on the lead lap, so he is fairly comfortable. Oh there, yeah. sort of. She's gone round again. Oh no, not that corner this time. But the one before it. Is, well, Same corner was... that. <laughs> she nearly dropped it again trying to get going. Yeah, we just. Oh, yeah, just. And that's the thing we we've mentioned just how, yeah, how lethal the torque is in these things. Oh yes, you had to be very careful getting that car in the way. <laughs> it's uh, it's it's easy for us to laugh. We mean no disrespect. These things are not easy to drive. Oh, um, absolutely, absolutely. These are these are tough machines. Sorry, I don't um, that car in. So uh, she didn't hit anything, but has obviously decided to get the pit stop done. That's that's what you tell your crew. If you bring it in straight away, then it looks like there's a problem with the car. <laughs> Keep oh. going, then it's you're clearly your mistake. Charlie Summers is in. Oh, oh. interesting. Now we will see. Hmm? Why is he coming in so early? I'm gonna go back and. Oh wait, what? Oh, Holy got... heck, hang on. He's Last in. lap, 119-1. Yeah, but that'll be because he's crossed the line of the pit, sure. Yep. Never mind. <laughs> but he's got an incident, so uh, he's lost that uh, potential to gain the, the point from zero. Oh, oh, wait. I think I just spotted something. Go on. Wait, I need to go back. I, got, I, I saw it just as the end as I was like, well, he didn't do anything. Leave me Morris yeah. is in. So what was the stop for Charlie? 7.7? .7. So, yeah, a respectable stop. Kimi Larson is in. There he is. We've just seen him rolling to a halt. But Charlie Summers finds himself in third then behind Timi Vakiavi. See the tune of 2.8 seconds. So he only finds himself, what, eight seconds at best behind the leader? 
Yeah. Now running off camp, so that has been pretty good for Charlie Summer so far. Yeah, but now he's in a position where they might go a lot longer. Although we've had quite a few people in the pits, so maybe the the fuel's burning a little quick here. Um, that's so odd. Usually the leader stays out and goes for the overcut. Um, well, I mean, the, the strategy call was his, his alone. He was so far ahead. Yeah, I, made I, I, and I'm not going to say I know better. I'm not going to say <laughs> I know better because I definitely don't. Why is Knut Martinson only a second behind Gaidemir? Gaidemir has had a problem because he's way behind Erkel Lindstrom now. Oh, 127 last lap. So he's had a spin yeah. within the spot. Uh, we've lost David Butelar, unfortunately. He joined us in the chat. His uh, wheel has died, so that's a shame. He's done a... Um, oh, what is it? He's done a... He's done a carry, is not he? Yeah. Yes, that's uh, unfortunately, yes. Jan Brezina and Stefan Herman come in as well. And that's uh, That was that was Gady Man that just went through the shot there. So Brezina is going to come out in seventh, it looks like. I assume Canute came in as well. Yes, he did. His backwards are still spinning. So he's very <laughs> eager to get on with it. Uh, just an update on Gadamer. He spun at the exact same place I landed in. At the exit of turn six. Flipped oh, the curb on the inside a little too much and round it went. Oh, dear. And that shows you oh, how... Tim Delisle and Kimmy Larson, sorry. Tim no. Delisle and Kimmy Larson scrapping it out for 10th place in the minute. But that's the position they both pitted. Hmm. Tim Delisle pitting much, much earlier, but uh, his uh, recovery charge continues. There's now, as you say, car number 17. Tim Delisle is really pressuring. And has Gaidemir come in? No, Gaidemir spun. We just fell. Oh, no. Let's just see what happened. It cut to where it just happened. So it is really unraveling oh, very badly for Dominic Gaidemir. Let's see what happened. Did he just get a bit greedy on the curbs? No, that oh, there he goes. Yeah. Very that was weird. weird. That was that's taking me a very long way. Break! Oh, there we go. He, oh wait. It looks like somewhere on the line he's picked up uh, that same kind of side pod damage we had from Donington. Oh. Um, which I don't know if there's a specific point you have to avoid here, um, but we saw last time out that if you pick up that kind of damage, it makes the car basically undrivable. Uh, you have very mm. little, uh, very little downforce produced, and Dominic has got like the car. Oh dear. Valtteri is now one. Oh, he's actually falling slightly further away, I think. It's 1.4 behind Charlie Summers at the moment. Bear in mind, Valtteri hasn't pitted yet, so that's how badly it's gone for Valtteri. Okay, he was a fair distance behind anyway, but that spin he had has not helped matters. I think, again, he's just. Not been able to keep up with Rennie at all, even at this point. Does he come in now? Nope, he's uh, looking to carry on. There is <laughs> Timu Vaikiavi. Again, Charlie, he's just on an 18 3. He, doesn't, he knows he doesn't have to pit. Uh, doesn't have to push, rather. Oh, it doesn't have to pit either because he's already done that. So, oh, that was someone off. I don't know who that was. I just saw someone facing the infield. Who on earth was that? Erkin Enstrom? Possibly. I don't know. No, it was, uh, it was someone, someone of the same colouring as uh, Agnes. I'm not sure who that was. But yeah, that was someone facing a direction they shouldn't have been. But um, Agnes yeah. comes in, a pretty decent stop for him, so 8.2. The only people that haven't uh, been in yet are Valtteri, Rene, and Timu. Yeah. Um, Dominic has pitted and has come out with that same kind of side pod damage, so it wasn't fixed in the pits. So he may be in for an interesting 23 minutes and 32 seconds. Hmm. Where's the. Let's see if we can see it. Oh, there if you it go is. To the chase cam, you should be able to see it on the right hand side. In the chase cam. Uh, so or if you go. It's on his right pod, isn't it? Yeah, if you click actually on RR suspension, you can kind of see it on the right hand side. Um, oh, there one. it is. Yeah, well, you see the, the back end of where the, yeah. the, uh, <laughs> the restyling of the paint. <laughs> yeah, that's. It's going to be a race that he, he'll want to forget. Charlie Summers continues to, if not press on with his original pace, and certainly uh, make sure that Valtteri doesn't put any additional pressure on him. 
Yeah, so, he's he's like you said, kind of said earlier. He doesn't need to race up to catch these guys ahead. They have to pit from in front of him. Um, yeah. um, equally from behind him, he doesn't need to to catch up super fast and get involved in a fight. He doesn't need to. Of our remaining runners, one man and one man alone has zero incidents. Want to guess who that may be? Is it Canute Martinson? It's Canute Martinson once again, because he has this amazing ability. I mean, not every race he does sometimes get caught out. But even the greats make mistakes. But he, that's we're talking about consistency matters, and there's a, a great show of uh, exactly how well consistency can work for you. Fair play to Canute for maintaining that particular record. Keeping an eye on, keeping an eye on Charlie. Oh, there's uh, Andrew Greenhill in that uh, distinctive car, and he's going to have to get out of the way. Oh, that's Timu coming through, and Rene is in. The inherited race leader has come in. So, I wonder who, how, how Valtteri and Timo will respond to that now. A decent stop again, so 6.4 for Rene. So, new race leader is then Timo Vakiavi. As mentioned, he will have to come in. What's going on with Jan Brezina? Nothing, a lag moment is going on with Jan Brezina. He's the fifth, so that's not a, a bad effort for Brezina. Started in 12th, he's been through the pits, so uh, he's on for a, a decent haul of points. I suspect as well mm. that Tim Delisle has made a mistake because he's now about eight seconds behind Kimmy uh, Larson. Uh, yes, seconds. and with Erka Lindstrom in the way. Yeah, so I think somewhere along the line he's made a mistake. <coughs> Rene came out in fourth, uh, 12 ish, 12 and a half seconds behind Alanda, but Alanda yet to pit. Uh, the Glacier Racing pair have got to do so at some point. They won't share a pit box, so they can do it at the same time. Uh, Timu's not looking to do so. What does Val Valtteri do? No, he just wants to get Andrew Greenhouse behind him. So, still no move towards the pits then. For oh! The oh, go on. Tim Delisle, I was just casually on board with him, having tried to find out what happened, but I couldn't see. Um, mm. Had a bit of a moment through the fastest part of the track run through to turn six and seven. Uh, he had to suddenly put the brakes on mid-corner, which you oh. don't want to do. No, uh, not, not behind large. Uh, but he survived. And just uh, in case anyone's interested, just a point on the pit lane and the pit stops and how they work. Uh, your grid box is based on where you qualify. Um, ah. Which is annoying if you want to actually practice where it is. Um, <laughs> it's also a problem if you happen to be the final pit box of the lane um, because mm. after that it resets back to front because if you don't realise you're at the back and you don't generally know this information until you come in and you see your pit crew immediately at the pit lane entrance <laughs> that you weren't ready for and have to make a sudden dive and we've seen more than once people having to reverse down the pit lane yeah. I may have also done it myself <laughs> and catch I can, you out sometime. I can neither confirm nor deny that I've witnessed you do it <laughs> Nope, nope. <laughs> nope, no evidence of it. It never happened. It's, it's unfortunate. It's one of these kind of like, oh, for goodness sake, embarrassing moments that that, that happens. I mean, it, it, ooh, that uh, looked a little twitchy there, Charlie, coming down the hill for turns one and two. But, uh, caught it like the pro that he is. Yeah, but it's, it's one of these really kind of like, oh, really? It's like those slow spins we saw earlier as well. It's just one of those moments that that's, you just think is down to kind of I say clumsiness, but I don't mean that in an unfair sense. It's just a, a small mistake, but because it happens at a slow speed, it feels that much worse. Yes, and um, for me, when I remember where I did it, I did it at mid-Ohio, and I went down the pit lane, and it's like, where's my guy? Where is he? <laughs> and then I got to the end of it and think, I think I missed him. Oh, no. So did you do so I had to go the whole I length? I had to go the whole way back round. Yeah, and he was right at the entrance, and if anyone's familiar with mid-Ohio, it's a very tight pit lane entrance as it is. Um, and he was <laughs> right at the very end, uh, right at the start of the pair lane, and it was, it was awkward. I even had to park in the box, like, 45 degree angle. Oh, no. Our leaders are uh, coming up to Saradov to uh, put her a lap down. She's in 14th at the moment. Will Vaikiavi come in this time? Nope. Still no sign of it. What about Valtteri? Nope. nope. He's not either. So the uh, Glacier Racing... Pit crews still have nothing to do at the moment. And Rene came out in fourth place. He's got clear air ahead of him as well, so it's mm. not like 
Um, the only thing I can think that maybe Glacier are trying to do is, is run the car with a little lower fuel um, just to try and get some little extra added performance to try and get one or both cars back past uh, Rene. Mm, not particularly going to help because it's over sort of a 24 ish second overall loss. So, at the mo well, at the moment, it's not going to help, but you never know. You never know. If the curves <laughs> bite, as uh, they have done a few times, or you know, if, if Rene feels like doing a bit of lawn mowing, then it could all come good. It'll make for a shorter final stop, though. No, it probably won't actually make that much of a difference. Kind of bit. I mean, the, the, the bonus is out front is you can, like, if you keep going, you can try and do a little bit more fuel saving, or you can try and... You, you can essentially be more precise with your fuel because you know exactly mm. how many laps you're going to get. Um, but there's not much benefit. We do technically have a fight for the lead right now, but it was already decided. Ah, there yeah, we go. There now team <laughs> yeah, team has gone that, in. That is exactly what Charlie wanted, and Valtteri follows him in, in, in as well. Ah, uh, so uh, coming, in in, coming in in tandem. What's happened to, what's happened to Tim Delisle? He was weaving. What's he done? Turn four. That's what he's done. Oh, oh. <laughs> that was Kadu Martinson that just went past. So uh, that was a bit of a hair-raising moment for for yeah, Kadu. Uh, uh, a scary moment when you come out of a corner and you see a car in front of you having a an almighty moment. But like, please, please regain control of your vehicle. <laughs> please. Oh, that worked out so well for Charlie. Just as he was having to think about having to make an overtake, they pitted. No. Um, oh wow, Rene Escamp, five seconds clear of Valkyavi. That's gone very well for him. And yeah, another 1.6 behind Valkyavi is Valtteri Landa. So that's worked out very well for Rene. No, car number 29, but 17 seconds is Charlie's now lead. That's, uh, again, we don't need to put into words just how good that is. I think. I oh, know Tim Delaz is recovering after that uh, I I previous issue he had. Can you imagine we saw just ahead? No one, no one else is in an immediate battle, so uh, let's have a look at where everybody is. We have, of course, uh, Charlie Summers, as uh, we've just been mentioning. That's Sarah Dug directly behind him. 17.2 seconds further down the road is Renny Oskamp, who I think it's fair to say, unless he has a problem and introduces himself to a wall, uh, he is going to be taking the championship lead, but Charlie Summers is really going to be putting his name right back in the mixture. Viking Army in third position with his teammate one and a half behind. Then Jan Brezina, a decent effort then for Guy 83 in fifth position. Stefan Ehrman in 179 in sixth place. There is Lubomir Morris, who's uh, gained a few since the, since the start, so not too bad. Kimi Larson. Been a bit of a mixed bag for him, but uh, presses on nonetheless. And is Erke Lindstrom, who's gained uh, a decent handful of positions since the start, so not too bad for you, Canute, as previously mentioned, and still resides. Oh no, big button, he has picked up an instant. So no, Canute's broken that uh, broken that streak. He no longer has the uh, zero incident limit point coming to him. Well, you still get one point if you get one instant. It's two for oh, zero. Yes, two for zero. Beg your pardon, that's so true. Then it is Tim DeLion, who's one and a half behind Canute. Oh. Go on. Oh, well, we have we have scrapping going on between Dominic Gatermere and Sarah Dove into turn one. Sarah Dove on the outside, Gatermere on the inside. Oh, Sarah Dove just oh. back now. Oh, that could have gotten a, a little uh, little ugly, but they're well navigated by those two. Tim DeLion is uh, a couple of seconds behind Canute. Then Alexander Waldo on his own, 5.6 behind Tim DeLion. Then that battle we've just seen. Actually still going on, technically, between Gatermere and Sarah Dove. Sarah is up a few positions from where she started. Wow. Gatermere must be really struggling. That's going to be amazing if she can go around the outside. Oh, she's, she's trying so hard. Go on, you can do it. And Gatermere oh, just no. nails the inside line. Well defended, but you've got to give it to Sarah Dove. That was a great effort. I'm, I'm going to go back and rewatch that. <laughs> Oh, that, that was, <laughs> she threw that into turn six and seven with amazing speed. Uh, dudes, what's right? Oh, Rayos Camp! Oh no, oh, what's happened no. to you? Huge bits of your car missing. What did I say? I commentator cursed him. Yeah, there oh, he is, trips in turn four. Oh, 
Oh, that's that's your day done. And I'm sure is he going to drive back? Did he drive back? Or no, no, he towed. No. He towed. Did oh, I not boy. say if he introduces himself to a wall? Did I not say those very words? Well, yeah. I'm sure he will hate me for that. And then it is uh, Andrew Greenhalgh who was a, with a decent starting position, sadly undone itself in the first lap and he hasn't been able to get further back up the field. Uh, technically speaking, Andrew is our last running car now with uh, Rene's rather dramatic exit from the race, but that, that uh, puts the championship driving seat, so just, you know, technically speaking, back in Valtteri's hands. Absolutely, and it brings all of them in against Rene. Rene just loses out now. Mm. You know, it's kind of like we said earlier. I'm just trying to work out if we're um, someone in the chat do maths <laughs> for me. Oh, we've got roughly 47 laps. What's 97, 90% of 47? Um, and tell me if he, Rene qualifies for, for <coughs> half point. It's not. Ten, it's not 10. <laughs> <laughs> it's not 10. Um, uh, 90 percent minus 10 for 10 for 47. Rough maths tells me that's about 43 or so. Okay, so he's not quite qualified for full points. Uh, so he's half oh, points, yeah. and he's currently classified in 15th place. Yep. Uh, oh, there's Katie Mayer again on Saradov. Here we go again. This is battle resuming at turn one, and again Saradov behind. But we'll see if that uh, they've. I saw that Sarah Dove had overtaken Dominic Gaidemere again. So now, th this battle, this is a battle for what is now 12th. Whoa! That was close. <laughs> it was a little bit. <laughs> oh no! Again, turn four! <laughs> it's claimed another one. Dominic really has been struggling all race long. Again, that side pod damage is, is, well, has just been made rather visible there in that shot. But uh, you, you did say yourself that. Uh, the, the side pod damage does make the cars very undrivable as Valtteri Lander and Timmy Vajkiavi are swap round. Um, I'd be surprised if Timmy... Well, Timmy looks like he's actually racing for La Valtteri! Valtteri's off! Oh, Valtteri lost it! He hasn't hit the wall, but uh, literally just kind of... As, as he was out of the shot, we heard the screeching of tyres. Oh, he was very close to not hitting the wall. Very close. What is happening with our champion? Oh, <laughs> what a straight... That was just a... Oh, that was literally inches in that. But that was really strange. The car just snapped to the left on a right-hand bend. How peculiar. Yeah, and, and just to finish my, my earlier point in making the chat do maths, um, <laughs> Rene, Rene right now is picking up four whole championship points, and Charlie Summers is on course for about 54. Nice. Which will put Charlie ahead of Rene in the stand. Wow! Kind of like we were saying, anything can happen. Let me just check, but I may not make it. <laughs> but then Valtteri is just thrown away. It's surely a short yeah. second because I can't see the team who would have fought him too hard, and there was no impact between the two. He just literally just threw it off to the left. Yeah, I mean, I, th I think it's fair to say that. Okay, well, I think Team Moves just had the pace and the consistency mm. over over Alanda today. Um, you know, Elanda's made two mistakes so far um, that we've seen anyway. We've, um, uh, we've we have our first disqualification. Oh, oh, and let me see. Oh, Andrew, Andrew. Greenhelg, yep. A oh, shame for his maiden race to, to go the way it has, but the the, you know, the instant limit will bite anybody, and unfortunately, there's a few people that aren't too far behind it as well. But uh, sadly, that's uh, that's ended for Andrew Greenhelg. And uh, yeah, he's outside of that 90% uh, limit as well. You get half points if, if you do 75% or more. Uh, but when you're disqualified, you're disqualified. You get no point. Oh dear. Well, Valtteri then back up on his way. 7.3 behind his teammate now. So with eight and a half minutes, less than eight and a half minutes to go, that's going to be pretty impossible for him to, to make up unless Kimu stops. Yeah, it's gonna be it's gonna be very tough. I don't think Team is gonna be quite so willing to let that one <laughs> No. We do have a few battles forming though, interestingly. Jan Brazina now up to fourth. Uh, so again his uh, his drive getting even more impressive. He's being chased with Stefan Herman. So there's a, a definite battle for fourth place going on. Then it's behind them is Lieberman Morris and Kimmy Larson. 
battle for sixth, and then a little bit further down the road is Alexander Waldo and Tim Delisle. He's having a real run at him. That might be DRS. Or oh, a let off by Tim. That was that is some insane overspeed otherwise. Uh, Tim looks like he's letting that one go. I wonder if Tim's carrying damage. Yeah, has he got that mystery side? Yeah. Mm. Like looks it. like it. Looks okay. But uh, yeah. oh. oh no, he does have some cyber damage. Oh, he does. But oh, on both sides. <laughs> oh well, if you're gonna do that it, that was why I couldn't tell because I usually just look to one side, but they look so <laughs> similar. They look the same. Yeah. yeah. But yeah, that's a, I must say that's a decent run as well by Waldo. He started last, or towards the tail. He started 18th, um, only ahead of uh, Soren Chris, I believe it was, and uh, now I'm running in 10th. So again, that's uh, consistency doing wonders for him. But Jan Brezina is under a lot of pressure now. Stefan Herman. So previously mentioned that battle for fourth position rages on, and they only have. I would say less than seven minutes to do anything about it. Roughly six laps. We'll see. I mean, that lap count can change. It's all dependent on when the checker flag falls, of course. It's still on for quite a few people. Especially yeah, absolutely. Someone, especially if someone up top decides to have another problem. Well, decides to is the wrong word. But if they have <laughs> another problem, I know I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go over there. Yes, I'm going to take a random line. I'm going to pretend I'm racing imaginary people. Oh, no, they've <laughs> popped me in the wall. <laughs> I, I'm going to do a Kimi Raikkonen and find some closed gates. Yes. Oh, I'll <laughs> forget that. That was, uh, um, that was a long time ago. Seven years ago now? Oh, I feel old. <laughs> well, well, I am old. So. Uh, yeah, but anyway. <laughs> <laughs> Moving on. Reminiscing of this track. Um... Stefan Herman is definitely still putting the pressure on Jan Brzezina. And Jan's had a kind of a quiet race uh, so far, so it's going to be... Oh, they're definitely going defensive, though. Yeah. He's, that's a real... Oh, Tim Delisle. What's happened to you? Nothing's happened to you. I'm still getting a few lag moments going on. But, yeah, Brzezina has got it all to do now. There's less than five and a half minutes of the race to go. Our leaders... Charlie Summers... What's happened to... Vaikyavi? No, no, that's the. I thought he said Vaikyavi was suddenly 40 seconds behind us. How has he not lost a position? He hasn't at all. It's 23 seconds. Numbers yeah. lying to me again. Yeah, the thing is, basically, from what I have managed to understand, it's just a proximity thing based off who you're looking at. Mm. Um, so I think the issue is Charlie is so far ahead of the rest of the pack, it's getting confused. <laughs> Are you still on this? He, he's actually finished, done the podium on his own. He's now off to the, you know, off to get changed. He's off to have his ice cream. <laughs> yeah, just for reference on the gap, Charlie is at turn four right now, and Valkyavi is coming down the back straight. Wow. <laughs> that is, that's me. the size of that lead. <laughs> that's over a whole sector. That's almost a sector and a half that uh, Summers leads by. What's kind of depressing is, with five laps to go, he might get to a point where he has gained a second for every two minutes of racing. <laughs> wow. That's half a second a minute for those who can't do maths, and even I can do maths <laughs> on that. Um, which is insane. That's over half a second a lap. Uh, but he's been untouchable today. Absolutely. Unless he makes a mistake. Oh, but that's... I'm not on me. I was looking... <laughs> I was looking at what happened to Tim Delarge and suddenly he's fallen way off the back of uh, Alexander Waldo. He's being, there's a race leader in the way. He's uh, he been lapped. Tim Delarge has been lapped and uh, Charlie Summers is now chasing off after Alexander Waldo. So that's basically, that's nearest damn it, half the field that's going to be a lap down. Top 10, now uh, up into the top 10. Everybody except the top 10 at the minute have been lapped. And I'm willing to bet he can probably get Alexander Waldo. It's looking pretty strong, isn't it? Uh, four yeah. laps to go now, as confirmed by the overlay. We will be finishing on lap 47, ready or not. Stefan Herman's fallen a little bit off the back of the Ambrosina, but still looming large. Kimi Larson is still with Lubomir Morris. The other battle we did have was Waldo and Delisle. That was previously mentioned has dispersed now, but they're still on track battling to resolve. It just doesn't involve 
the man in the AOR blue. No, he's uh, the closest he came to a battle was when he was waiting for Timo and Valtteri. Yeah. Glad and he was just getting the run and then Demi went to the very, very inside and pissed Oh, Kimi Larson leaving me. Oh, that was on the back straight and that was down four. Kimi Larson said, uh, well, we haven't really looked at uh, Kimi an awful lot. Only in these uh, closing stages have, uh, have we had a look at what he's doing. Now, he's, uh, he's shown some good pace. He's had a few unfortunate incidents, though, but he has, he's certainly shown some good pace. And also Herman has closed back in on Jan Brezina. So that battle isn't done yet. Three laps remain for us at Interlagos. And lo and behold, Alexander Walder is behind the race leader. He didn't really have a choice, let's be honest. As that again that meant in no disrespect, he had to move over. So, uh, oh, that's again close. Morris and Larson. Is this going to be a move into turn one for the Super Sweet? On the nose of Kimi Larson. What does he do? A little too far back to try and move at the moment. So uh, Morris will be saved this time, but a oh, bit of a lock up coming into turn one. It's on that back straight heading down to turn four. It's going to be Kimmy's best chance, I think. Yeah, the other thing to consider is we don't, again, we also don't know how many DRS these guys have left. They have eight, remember, for the race. I don't think it's going to matter. Though. Kimmy to go to the outside. Oh. <laughs> That, that move from Lubomir could have gone horribly wrong because as he moved back over, he did clip a wheel on the grass. He did. I, I was... And, and that could be... That is can usually mean a one-way trip off track. Yes. And there's the wall is waiting quite close to uh, close to the track at that point. Oh, a lock-up again from uh, Lubomir. Struggling a bit under the pressure. And, of course, Kimmy will be happy about that. Really piling it on, trying to get through. Looks on the inside, but no things better. Right. Again, Lubomir locking up, coming into turn 10. Back down the That's hill. Like, that you have to lock up there. It's the role of this track. Oh, you, quite a few people have. It's more kind of under rotation than, than kind of over application of brakes. In essence. Oh, he's closer this time as Kimi Larson. I think he's going to be now or never. Oh, not quite. It's still another couple of laps to do, but uh, it surely is the best opportunity. Here he comes. He's topped out. He's on the limiter. He is. He had nothing left. He's going to have to... Oh, that's unfortunate for Kimi Larson. <laughs> oh, dear. It's not like the F3 League. Like, like in the F3 League, if they realise that, then at least they have the sprint race to, to change it. Mm. Uh, but for this, you only get one chance. <laughs> yeah, Just absolutely. Have a look where the leader is as well. This is now the final lap, and Charlie is on the back straight. Goodness Time me. Time has just run out. So there he is. I thought I honestly thought he was going to hit the ball then. But Same. <laughs> your winner here in Brazil is Charlie Summers by nearly 30 seconds. One more lap and he'd have done it. Yeah. Yeah. He just finished his, that off with the 117.3. <laughs> oh my goodness. Yeah, hundreds off his personal best, which is that fastest lap of the 17.2. And the next fastest lap, bearing in mind was a 17.5 by Valtteri Alanda. Yeah. Second across the line is a team of Akiyabi. Then it is a Valtteri Alanda. So Valtteri did close back into three seconds behind his teammate. Probably because Valtteri may well have been slowing down. Brezina hangs on to fourth position ahead of Stefan Herman. Only just by one and a half tenths in the end. Morris does fend off Kimi Larson for that sixth position. There is Gaydemir. He finished in 13th and lap down. Erke Lindstrom is going to take 8th place. A decent haul of uh, improvement there from his start. So it's 14th to 8th. Nicely done. And Knut is the last man on the lead lap. Here he comes to finish in 9th in car number 24, AOR Yellow. That was, um, that was impressive. Absolutely. And then 10th downwards, Alexander Waldo. Oh, Charlie. oh, go on. Do you want it? If you look, Charlie did it. Oh, he, he did. By 30.0021. Half a second a minute. Oh, he oh, pulled oh. Out. oh. <laughs> <laughs> wow, that's Alexander Waldo doing some amazing uh, acrobatics there, bouncing off of the side of Charlie Waldo's guy. He, he finished the lap down, so he, he hasn't lost anything as a result other than his nose cone. 
Tim Delisle finished 11th. He's already returned back to the bit. Saradov in 12th has uh, found the same tie barrier that killed Phil Reed. Dominic Gaudemere is going lawn mowing. He's finished in 13th. And then we lost Andrew Greenhalgh, Renny Ostercamp, David Butelar, Phil Reed, Daniel Morris, and Soren Kratz. Wow. Yeah. That's, and I, I'm going to throw the question out there, but I mean, I already know my answer to this. Who is your driver of the day? Give us your answers. There's been some decent fights out there. Oh, someone's flying the wrong way down the, the road, but this is, this is kind of eye racing tradition. Once the race is all done, once everybody's crossed the line, kill yourselves. It's, it's traditionally known as bounce. <laughs> yes, absolutely. Once it's over, you can do what you like. All, all gloves are off. Go for it. Be silly. But incredible from uh, Charlie Summers. I, I take it Mr. Summers was getting your vote. Yes. I don't think I've ever seen a driver put on quite as dominant to drive in. Certainly not in a new car. Um, certainly not in 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 such dominant fashion against such strong competition. We know how good Rene Ostercamp and Valtteri Lander are. Mm. Um, and it, it unraveled for them today on a day when Charlie absolutely smashed it. Um, that's yeah. that's got to be up there. If we've got any stats people... <laughs> uh, in the chat that's got to be up there one of the biggest winning margins um, oh totally yeah and he's going to pick up 54 points that's a lot of tyre smoke on the stuff that's driving. a lot of tyre smoke yes <laughs> not much yeah, in the way of car body work there but <laughs> if, you, if you can just consider that Charlie's picking up 54 points Valtteri's picking up 40 and Rene's picking up 4 <laughs> oh wow yeah uh, <laughs> How quickly the championship, uh, you know, championship standings can change. Well, none of the drivers want to uh, come and chat. It was absolutely fine. It's not mandatory. Um, all the, a lot of them still having fun on the start finish line. I think, uh, I think we'll wrap this one up here. What a race it's been, and we finally bid goodbye to Inter Lagos. Three visits from our three different categories, and three very different races as well, but uh, all very entertaining. Thank you very much to those that have been with us through the chat. It's been uh, an honour to commentate for yourselves. Thank you very much, Stevie, for keeping me on the straight and narrow. Always a great pleasure, good sir. Yep, always fun to talk over these races with you. It's absolutely joyous. It's a fun way to spend my evening. Why? Where else would I go? Um... <laughs> For the upcoming information on iRacing AOR broadcasts for the leagues, I said that in all the wrong order, but <laughs> you get what I meant. Uh, the next round of this championship is in two weeks' time. Um, at a brilliant track. We don't go there very often. Um, KK, I think this is one you've commentated on as well. It's Virgin uh, Virginia, Virginia International Raceway. It is, it is a it is You've never done that one? No, I think... Oh, I've it's great. I think if it's the track I'm thinking of, I, it's the, I when I very first tried iRacing racing for the current setup that we use, it lagged itself to death. So uh, uh, I think if it, if that's the track I'm thinking of, uh, we did well, it with the GTEs. Hopefully, we've done that again. No, yeah, we've done it with GTEs. Yes, yeah, so I think it that's, that's in, the one. It's an incredibly fast first half and then an incredibly tricky second half. It's brilliant. I'm very interested to see how these cars are going to handle it. Mm. Um, but that's in two weeks' time for round five, the penultimate round of the championship list. Indeed. Um, the, on Monday, this coming, uh, we have round six of the GTE League at Twin Ring Mategi. Another awesome Japanese track that I can't wait for. Um, and then just coming Friday, we have the penultimate round of the F3 League. At Road America. Yeah, Road America. Um, so, yeah. There you go. A lot that's, to, that's all from me. A lot to look forward to then on the iRacing side, but there's plenty of other leagues that go on in between. So do come back with us to check for more AOR action. Thank you very much, and good night. <laughs>